water is polar. Each one of these little molecules is a water molecule made up of two hydrogens and an oxygen. So what we're going to do is talk about all the properties of water and we're going to use some models and a power point. Right? Brought to you by Curious Marine Land. So let's go ahead and walk through this PowerPoint and um, highlight certain things. So first, here's the general idea. You've got uh, you know, the clouds, you've got uh, vapor. So this one is going to evaporate and go up to the clouds. All right? The water is going to uh, coalesce and then come down as rain. And then, of course, when the temperature drops, it can become ice. So this, that's pretty much what I want you to see with here. So here's the, here's the gist of what I want you to see. We're going to keep revisiting this. First, we're going to talk about what, what actually makes water polar. Then how that creates these hydrogen bonds. And what do the hydrogen bonds do? And how are they different from other types of bonds? All right, the hydrogen bonds are unique in all living things. They make it possible for the bonding between DNA molecules. So let's go back to our little models. All right. So the first thing that I like my students to see is first recognize, okay, here's water. It's a covalent bond, just like this is a covalent bond, in that they're sharing electrons. But if you were to remove this out of the way, you see this does not interact. Yeah, I'm physically pushing it out of the way, but the magnets in these models are trying to show the intermolecular forces. Opposites are going to attract, and then negatives are going to repel, repel each other. All right, and they look at it. Right. So let's add that to here. This would be methane. This would be ethane. They are not. They are polar. These are polar. Scratch that. These are nonpolar covalent. This is polar covalent. What constitutes polar covalent? Here's a water molecule. What makes something polar covalent? Uh, unequal sharing of electrons. Unequal sharing of electrons. It's like it wants. It's like it wants to be ionic. If you look over here. It, these electrons almost leave and go to the oxygen and be like an ionic bond, but they never leave it. So it creates a positive and a negative side. So back to this, that's the first thing, polar covalent, which in turn is going to cause hydrogen bonding. So we can take a look at this picture, and let's go back to the actual models. I want to do some writing here. This is a water molecule that has the oxygen interacting with this hydrogen, interacting with that hydrogen. Let's use this one. Now, instead of writing this, I'm going to actually write a negative and a plus and a plus. This plus right here interacts with this minus of a different molecule. The thing I want my students to constantly grasp is the oxygen. I'm going to go and get rid of that text just so I can move the molecules around. The oxygen and the hydrogen. So this hydrogen is covalently bound to this oxygen. This hydrogen is covalently bound to this oxygen. But this oxygen is going to interact with the hydrogen of a different water molecule. This constant forming and breaking of water of hydrogen bonds creates the fluidity of water. And your so it's constantly moving around. So this is the first thing. Polar covalence creates high hydrogen bonds, which creates water sticking to water, which we call cohesion. Water sticking to another molecule, like so, is called adhesion. So at any time during this video, go ahead and pause the video. I'm not going to leave the text up or talk along uh, the lines of all the text, but here's the video again. Here's your your here's your minus. There's your plus. There's your plus. This minus interacts with this plus. 
some so there's some researchers who say that you shouldn't call it a bond. It's a weak intermolecular force. It's a weak intermolecular force because this bond is constantly forming and breaking and forming and breaking and forming and breaking. Um, I have some other videos where students act like water molecules if you want to watch those. I'll put those in the description. So this, it's kind of moving down and now imagine, so this is, this is actually cohesion. And this sometimes, the forces pull these in. This actually makes a little bowl. And it makes that bead that we're familiar with, like this. Let's look at the hydrogen bonds again at, with this website. Take a look. You see, see the little flashes of, of uh, blue? Those are showing the hydrogen bonds. The water molecules are constantly moving and interacting. The fluidity of water. Each one of those little blue things is a bond, a hydrogen bond, forming and then breaking, forming and breaking. And notice how it causes the molecule to vibrate. The oxygen, if it comes close with another oxygen, it's going to repel and move it around. Just remember the video with the uh, uh, models. Well, it's actually this video. But, so let's go back to here. Now, something else that happens with cohesion, it creates surface tension. This is why the water shredder bug can uh, walk on water. It creates a film. When you actually don't have enough mass, you can actually push, the water molecules are going to push back. Some people call it a cohesive force, like this. The cohesive forces are twofold. They create surface tension, and they also, again, create this little bowl here. So here's just some other examples of surface tension. So back to our list. So if we were to say, first, the bond is polar covalent which in turn causes the hydrogen bonding, which in turn can cause cohesion. Cohesion causes surface tension. Now, adhesion. Again, this would be adhesion when the molecules stick to other things. Water sticking to a something else is adhesion. Water to water is cohesion. Now, if this were, if my hands were the glass of a, of a graduated cylinder, you would think water would stay in a straight line. But it doesn't. What happens is it curves up, and hopefully my hands will demonstrate this. So the water curves up. So my thumbs are touching the water molecules. That's adhesion, and this is cohesion. And I'm doing a poor job in this video, but uh, what I'm trying to show you, let's turn this like that. This helps the magnets are not help cooperating, but that little bulb is what I was trying to show you, the meniscus, all right, right here. So there's, there's cohesion going across here, but this part right here and here is going to be adhesion. Over here, you're seeing water. One of the things about adhesion is, another principle of water is, it helps dissolve things. It's the universal solvent. So a combination of adhesion and cohesion is how you can get capillary action. This is what takes water and sucks it up tubes. If you ever had to draw blood and you take, they stab you and then they put that little tube and the water gets pulled into that, that's capillary action. Adhesion and cohesion combining. So I'm not going to elaborate on these because I just want to do a short video. I wanted to just give you an idea of the, some of the unique properties of water. So here again, water is surrounding this molecule. Water is surrounding this molecule. And if you'll notice, the positives right here, the hydrogen, are going to surround this. Chlorine is a negative ion. Sodium is a positive ion. So what's going to happen is the oxygen of the water molecule is going to be attracted to the sodium. The hydrogens of the water molecule are going to be attracted to the chlorine. Opposites attract. So back to our list. So I'm going to conclude by talking about water expanding. And I'll try and show you through this example. And one of the unique things about water that's different from any other molecule on our planet and possibly our universe is it's less dense as a solid than a liquid. No other substance is like that. So I'm rearranging my models. I want to conclude with this. So, so one, two, three, four, five, six. 
and 6. So this represents this represents water and this represents ice. It becomes less dense as it becomes a solid and look at the space between here and this. This is taking up more space than this. This nice crystal lattice and imagine another another another. So this is why water uh, will uh, rise to the top of the water. It will not freeze from the bottom up. These little critters are going to survive because the ice forms on along the top and ice floats in water because it is less dense. It's a basic principle of density. So this is kind of our video on the uniqueness of water, properties of water. So it should correspond with your notes. The only thing that I haven't mentioned was acids and bases. And uh, we'll do that. I have another video for that. But this is just some other pictures. Here's again. This is a good way of looking at it. If you look at this, so compare these two pictures here. There's the real model set, and then here's the cartoon picture. So you see these nice form lattice. If you were to count, you'd see the same number of water molecules in both pictures, but you see it's more busy here. It's less structured. It's more structured as as a ice molecule. It's just some other things. So, all right, for all that, pretty much is our video. Thanks for watching.